Mr. President, thank you, Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. I have the honor to present you my sixth report on the situation of human rights in Belarus, which is also my last one within the mandate that the Council assigned to me in 2012. I wished I could report to you about progress made during all these years, or at least in this concluding account. But as shown in the report, during these six years, the authorities have not brought any substantive, tangible change to the overall human rights situation in the country. Neither reforms nor small steps have been initiated by the authorities for the improvement of the situation. Belarus has refused to comply with the recommendations of the Council, just as it has refused to cooperate with the mandate of the Rapporteur. The description made seven years ago by the then High Commissioner for Human Rights remains unfortunately valid. Um, she made her recommendations following the heavy repression in the aftermath of the presidential election of December 2010. Belarus continues today to be governed by a purposefully repressive legal framework which is aggravated by recurring waves of massive violent repression. Last year, a key feature of my report to you was the analysis of the cyclical nature of centrally planned crackdowns on fundamental freedoms, including on peaceful demonstrators, non-governmental organizations, political opponents, human rights activists, and independent media workers. In March 2017, social protests were severely repressed. This year, a year later on 25th March, the occasion to do the same was the 100th anniversary of the independence of Belarus. Through arbitrary arrest and detention of at least 110 individuals, the authorities again reminded the citizens of the boundaries that they have been living since decades. The handling of political prisoners follows the same cyclical pattern. After the occasional release of some of them, the authorities arrest or re-arrest political opponents for various periods of time. The High Commissioner had recommended seven years ago to Belarus to stop putting pressure and harassing civil society organizations and human rights defenders. I once again have to report the continuing application of the infamous permission-based regime for public demonstrations, civil society associations, political parties, journalists, media outlets. The registration processes remain deliberately cumbersome and the repeated refusals remain on pity grounds and arbitrary, based on pity grounds and arbitrary. No new political party has been registered in the last 12 years and the only political association registered in recent years, tell the truth, has not been recognized as a party and hence it is not able to present candidates in election in its own right. Countless times has the international human rights bodies and myself recommended to remove the infamous 193.1 uh, clause of the criminal code, which since decades has criminalized any public activity not previously permitted by the authorities and at that even simple participation in any such activity is a crime officially in Belarus. 
Unfortunately, the authorities now plan to move the same offense from the penal code to the administrative code, which would make sentencing even more automated and less appealable. As experience shows, the fines and the ensuing confiscations have a less public impact, but at the same time come with a more existentially oppressive effect than the Hitler II practice. In other words, um, there is no progress on that crucial front. Um, 193.1 has lamed um, civil society and public life in Belarus for decades. Ladies and gentlemen, together with others, I am very concerned about a fresh example of the ever-tightening restrictions, which is the Bill on Amendments to the Media Laws that the National Assembly passed on 14 June in first reading. The changes, if enacted, would practically end the last bit of freedom expression of expression online after decades of absence of that freedom in the print and the broadcast media. The impact of the powers, um, boundless powers amassed by the executive branch and of the incumbent president himself, the lack of separation of powers, the, the lack of independence of judiciary, the rigged elections, the absence of a national human rights institution, asked from Belarus many, many times in the UPR process, should continue to remind the international community to be especially vigilant in the upcoming elections in 2019 and 2020. Since the finalization of my report in front of you, the Committee Against Torture reviewed Belarus. The positive change they noted is the ratification of some treaties after 16 years. However, the committee did not find any positive change on the ground. Ill treatment amounting to torture continues to be used as a systemic tool that serves the overall legal setup. There is still no definition of torture on the books, neither an effective national preventive or monitoring mechanism for the conditions in places of deprivation of liberty. Mr. President, the international community has expressed justified outrage over the fact that Belarus alone in Europe and in the former Soviet territories continues carrying out executions, just as over the ways those executions are being conducted. The President, although has the right to do so, has not ordered a moratorium on the practice, nor a decision has he taken to commute death sentences into imprisonment. The denial of the right to life could be ended with the stroke of a pen at any moment, but the political will is missing just as in other fields of necessary reforms. Forced labor is the most visible violation of economic and social rights in Belarus, um, where the economy remains a common type economy under the jurisdiction of the president. Belarus still has to address the issue both in legislation and practices, notably with regard to forced labor relabeled as voluntary and patriotic. In conclusion, as the world commemorates the 70th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, I have to deplore that the record of Belarus has gradually worsened since 90, 1996. And that situation has shaped the lives already of several generations of Belarusians. A 22 years old in Belarus um, or a person in his or her 40s in, in their adult life have never experienced free and fair elections, 
They fear to publicly express views that are critical of government policies. They do not have free access to different f media or to dif diverse culture. And they find it normal to undertake forced labor in the weekends. And they have grown up with officially supported stereotypes about women and men. It is all the more remarkable that there are still brave Belarusians, young or not so young anymore, who continue to stand up and claim their rights. My conclusion is that the international scrutiny exercised by the Human Rights Council uh, through this mandate is the only currently carry, carry, is the only body internationally that carrying out such work currently. And it serves and has served even during these six, six years as a deterrent for attempts by the authorities of Belarus to even further tighten control over the rights of their entire population. It gives visibility and offers some protection to human rights defenders. I am paying tribute to their work and courage, and I recommend to you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that the mandate of the Special Rapporteur be renewed until tangible progress is achieved. Thank you very much.